almost noon. I woke up early, then ate and took a nap. So here we are. First thing we gotta do is to get this crank to, uh, you know, say like 70. Um, I'm gonna get underneath the car right now and pull the rear end out. This wheel's just sitting on there. Uh, Cause the battle boxes have to go in before I do anything now. I've had them since I got the car and uh, now they gotta go in. So here we have upper solid spherical mounts. And then this is all the stuff for the battle boxes. Everything we need. So I'm gonna let the heater run for a minute find my other big light and get my ass underneath the car and start taking things apart. All right, so since I usually work alone, because uh, I like it that way, I am attempting to do these battle boxes. Oh, I got metal sticking in me. Oh, one side at a time. So we got the lower in we can uh all right so we got the lower battle box in you have to cut this open because let me grab the one for the other side all right i got the one for the other side uh it has to slide in to here and normally this opening only comes to there so then you gotta go and drill them four holes. So then, I have this top plate that'll go in. God dang piece of metal in my side. Now this, so now that piece of metal will go there like that. I want to have these in before the cage, obviously, because if I don't have enough extra bar, I'm going to go get some. I want to go from these up to the cage, whether it's the middle bar or whatever. I want to plate those in because that is one of the biggest problems, obviously, if you guys are Mustang fans, the torque boxes and uh, the abuse that this car Right now she's a storage container, but the abuse that this car is gonna go through, I don't want those things coming through the floor. I mean, now there's options out there, aftermarket stuff, uh, to cut the whole torque box out and put in a whole torque box, basically. Someday, maybe, I don't know if we'll ever get that far with this car. Not that the car's a piece of crap or nothing, but you know, if another car comes along and it's a good deal and it's got a lot of chassis work done to it in the future, obviously not right now, uh, could end up buying that, you know? Like, if we get that serious about this stuff, which I don't plan to stop racing, uh, eventually it'd be nice to have a car that's like a 25 point whatever, you know, a 25.5 car, something crazy, a full chassis car. Um, do I want it to be a Mustang at that point? I don't know. I would really like a Le Mans, which I kind of have one, but I want something new school, I guess. So who knows? You know, Malibu, something like that would be cool. But right now it's Mustang because I like the Mustang and we've got so many goodies. Look at all that stuff. It's all done. Now this all has to come off maybe this weekend. All the fuel lines. The other line's laid down there. I got the other end on it. I don't have the tank in it right now. I took the tank back out. I had the tank in it, took it out because I don't want it in there while I'm welding and stuff full of gas. Just makes sense to leave it out. So yeah. There's everything for the cage laying in the car. I'm gonna have to take back out, obviously the console, that, my ribbon. Anything I don't want damaged, I'm going to have to <clears throat> cover up because, uh, I mean, I've already been working out here forever today, it feels like, but not really, maybe an hour or so. Definitely going to take more than one weekend to get this cage done, to do it right.
maybe not even right to do it my way, which probably ain't the right way. Uh, a lot of you guys out there on the few pages I posted on, thanks for the uh, thoughts on how to space the cage away from the corners. I didn't even think about putting a piece of, you know, like one by in there and ratchet strapping it. I knew that, but whatever. If you can see there, it's really not that bad of a deal. These holes are already there. You have to drill them out because now you use like a half inch uh, bolt. So these are already there to kind of guide you on where the upper two go. And I don't know if you can kind of see there's this one. Then those two holes here, you got to drill out because this plate goes in here like this. So that plate will sit like that. Uh, the bolts from the top side will snug that in there. And then having the big reinforcement on the top helps. So essentially this side is done. But then here's this awesome thing when I'm getting it all pulled apart. I'm glad I have The new ends, look at this thing. It is completely blown out. That's probably where a lot of the wheel hopping stuff was coming from when I drove it the last time. I mean, it's definitely not gonna help. So, yeah, there's that. These control arms that it has, they're not in the best shape either, but they're on the car. They're gonna stay on the car until we change something up. You know, it'd be nice to get some adjustable stuff so we can change some things. But for now, it, these are what we got. They're dirty. The car's dirty. Everything's dirty. We're just going to roll with it. Uh, stupid me did mess up the brake line here. Being lazy, not the rubber end, but that end, trying to get the control arm off. I think I broke it. Uh, so I'll probably just have to cut that, reflare it, put it back together. Because I was... Uh, Started doing it the right way. I tried to be impatient and uh, didn't work. All right, so we got our upper bushing out. It's the new upper bushing. I uh, used a combination of the drill to go around the bushing. You can see it there. And then I used the sawzall to wherever. I used the sawzall to cut that. Basically, it relieves it, lets it release the tension, and Bob's your uncle. So now I'm going to go ahead and slather it up with some of this once I know it's going to fit. Put in the upper bushing and put this side back together. On well, the next bit of business before I can put these supports in, this one and the one that's right there, I need to clean all that sound deadening off because once they're in the car, I want to weld them to the car. You know, yeah, bolting them in is cool, but welding them will make it a little more part of it. Plus, since Eventually, I'd like to have, uh, you know, the cage run to that one and to this one. Might as well weld them into the car, then they're part of the car. This car is never not going to be a race car at this point. Uh, driven on the street, that doesn't mean anything. Yeah, it'll be driven on the street, but at heart, I'm not building it to be a street car. So for any of you guys that are kind of like me, and obviously if you watch my videos, I pretty much do everything by myself. Sometimes the wife will help. Uh, people are growing, you got your own damn things going on. I don't expect help from nobody, and I never ask for help from nobody. But, okay, I just got these torque boxes installed. Don't let nobody tell you you can't do it by yourself. That breaker bar on the bolt wedged. I got that thing from underneath. Yeah, up in there, wherever as tight as it could possibly go without breaking it. Uh, if I ever pull these back out to do control arms or something in the future, which I'm sure I will, I'm going to put grade 8 bolts instead of this junk it came with, but because these I'm not happy. I had to stack washers because they're almost a half an inch too long. Like, these are from Wild Rides. Wild Rides Race Cars Battle Box Kit is what's in here. Uh, most of the hardware has been great besides those two. You know, the, the, the bevel on the ring is good. Because it's got this here, this sleeve. 
You know, that's fine. Maybe the old kits, this was a half an inch longer. Which would have made up for the length of the bolt. But the bolt is half an inch too long. So if you got one of these kits and, you know, expect that. Those two bolts. I mean, this kit's a couple years old. Bought it for my brother's car. He bought it for his car. And he gifted it to me because he never did it on that car. So one side is done. Now I got to do the bushing. After I do the bushing and fix the brake line I broke, then I can put this side back together and go to the other side. All right, so we got the whole driver's side back together. Even wiped off that dirty, nasty old shock. So, yeah, I'm not sure if I'll put the sway bar back on it yet. I mean, it's a drag car. What do you need sway bars for? Well... Since I got sent home with the uh, Corona Light or the Modelo, whatever the hell it is I have. I don't have a fever or nothing, so there's that. Uh, I mean, I get it. Boss just don't want me spreading whatever my illness is to the rest of the shop and getting everybody sick, even if it is a cold. Then you got everybody thinking they got friggin' Corona. So, on the other side, looks like we get to work on the Mustang until Monday. Because uh, I don't get to go back to work till Monday. So I'm going to get back to where I left off. Try and finish up some videos and uh, maybe get this thing back on the ground, hopefully, and get the cage started because I got nothing better to do with my time. All right, I'm out here. This is, uh, I think, day two and a half of uh, the Corona virus. Whatever. It's Friday. I'm going to work on getting. Uh, this side done. I'm going to drop everything out. Do the battle box on this side. Uh, so I got to move all this junk. I really don't like all them washers I got over there, but it's what I got for now. So yeah, got to do the battle box over here. And then I'm going to drill the holes in the floor. Drop the main hoop down. That, 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 sh <laughs> shit in my mouth. Uh, yeah. So after I get the battle boxes in, I'm going to drill the hole in the floor, drop the main hoop down. I was hoping the NHRA rule book would be here by now because there was a few things I'd read. They have an online one, but I wanted the damn thing in my hand. It was like 10 bucks. So as soon as that gets here, uh, because my question is... If I put my plate in here, doot, 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 six by six. Yeah, the guy before never welded it in. He had a plate bolted top and bottom. And, uh, yeah, you can see how well that was. It's all pulled up and garbage. So, I'm pretty sure I read in the wool, wool book, rule book, that I can weld vertically up these, weld around that, so that I can get that tucked as far into the corner as possible. I want to read it in the book in my hand before I go ahead with that plan. Um, yeah, because if not, then I'll end up ratchet strapping the thing in and giving myself... Here's the nozzle off my gun. You know, so I'll have to give myself probably an inch and a half or something here. Inch and a half here. Which if I don't have to, I don't want to.
step. We got everything apart out there. Everything that matters. Now we got to cut out that section. There you see I got marked in yellow. Because this is no feet. You can't get it up inside there. So cut out that section. This slides right up and in like that. And then this bolts to the control arm. These get drilled through the floor. So to do that, you wanna use a finger remover 5000. This is a professional finger remover 5000. Don't be a dummy. Cover your head. Yeah. I don't want sparks in my eyes. I don't need to get hurt. I still gotta go to work whenever the, uh, whenever this corona shit is over. Really kinda sucks. I had a little bit of a cough. Boss uh, basically didn't want me at work because didn't want me to get anybody sick. Didn't want a hysteria or whatever. It doesn't matter. So, I mean, I don't feel good. I will admit that. But I don't think I have the corona. I don't have a fever or nothing like that. I just feel like I got allergies or cold or flu. Whatever. Go away. So, yeah. Going to do that. Um, yeah, so you don't have to take the rear end out of the car to do this it may be easier it may not i mean i was trying to not do it so i didn't have to bleed the brakes and then i broke a brake line so now i have to bleed the brakes anyways so yeah i'll get the brake line fixed eventually we only need front brakes uh this bushing too friggin destroyed i don't know if this light works yeah so this bushing here too destroyed you can see up there towards the front of the car. Uh, so that's going to make a huge difference having the new solid bushings in up there. But then I got to drill out the holes for that bracket. I'll probably chuck you back in the time lapse to watch me do this and send sparks all over my phone because that has to be good for it. Alright, so as you can see, I haven't cut the hole all the way yet, but even that little bit, it won't do it. You, you kind of see what we're working with here now. So I'm going to trim this back a little bit more, and then we should be able to get that bad lad up in there. Alright, we've trimmed a little bit more off. Now you can see, just kind of got to fish it up in there. Now this would go directly over the bolt. I have to go inside and pop that drain plug out because that interferes with it. So I'll go from the top side, peel some seam sealer off, pop that off, uh, have to beat the bolt the rest of the way through, put it on, bolt it on, drill the holes, mount this one, move to the other one. All right, so we got everything bolted in from up top. There's that one. When I go to weld them down, I'll beat that corner. You can see it's standing up because I am gonna weld these in completely. Uh, I am definitely, like I said, going to change the bolts to grade 8. It's the great, oh, my hair's probably awesome. It's the great shutdown. Don't mind my hair. So, uh, I don't feel like going to the store. Uh, I went shopping this morning for groceries since uh, I'm off. Now I just got to, what do I got to do? Oh, we're going to get that bushing out of there. So, I'm going to use the drill method. I'm going to set you up, and uh, I'm sure everybody's seen the video. I've never tried it until this. It is not as easy as that friggin' video makes it look. Maybe if I torched it first to get it loose. I did the other side of the drill method, and, uh, well, it sucked. So, here I go. You see, it didn't go in and just go wee. That's how the last side went.
that's how hard it was to get the rubber out. Now, man, I'm working up a sweat over here. Now I'll show you my method for getting the steel out. Yeah, go ahead and you got to get your handy dandy saws them all and you go in here like this. Usually want to do her in two spots. Like the saws and malls got them all. Come in, you give her a few whacks. When you do that, it releases the tension on them. That is the one quick tip that came out of this, not the uh, drill bit thing. I mean, I guess it didn't take that long, but it wasn't that short either. So now I'll grab some sandpaper, clean that up inside there real quick. Now we get to our, let's get our light fixed back up here. We got this fancy studio lighting. I know, only the best guys. Turn our studio light a little bit. That's a little better, probably. Well, that's what you're getting. Let's go in here real quick. A little sand them up paper. Whatever you got, emery cloth, uh, old pantyhose, pretty much anything would work. You know, old sock you found under your bed. It's been there for a little too long. Snort of the good stuff. Pull that out. Wipe her out real nice, like. Give her a quick uh, test fit. See here, it's got these are removable. Obviously, you want them in there. Just unspins. Well, then this guy should slide right in this hole. Yep, yeah, that'll go in there. I'm gonna lube her up. Give her a good liberal coat of that anti seize. Get it all over everything. Get it inside of her. Whoop. Making a mess. Okay, I think we're good enough. All right, and then send her home. Let's see. Just tapping very lightly. The other side went in real easy. I almost got it stuck in there when I test fit it. Sometimes lightly comes hardly. Okay, get my locking ring on. I'll grab the channel locks and give that a snug. And it's just knurled, there ain't no wrench size for it. My big old chainy locks.
I know, don't mind the exhaust. It's still hanging. I have the hangers for it. But I gotta pull it off still and weld the top side of it. So, hangers will go on when the exhaust is fully done. All right, that's done. Basically, it's put the uh, control arm back in, put the spring back in, put the shock back on. And this part of the project is done. You know what the best part about that is? This part of the project being done, I get to go cross it off the board. All right, everyone. So, I know usually I don't put like time and dates and whatever in my videos. Sometimes I do. It's, uh, Three o'clock on Friday, Mid Illinois, Governor Pritzker, whatever his name is, I believe that's it, supposed to come on and tell us if uh, we're going on lockdown for the next two weeks or however long. Could this be a very strange moment in history? Waiting for it to come on. I don't know what to think. Therefore, Starting tomorrow evening, Saturday, March 21st at 5 p.m. Here we go. Until the end of April 7th, all what? our residents will be subject to a stay-at-home order. There is a great deal of misunderstanding about what a stay-at-home order means. So I want to clarify it for everybody. Here's what will stay the same. You'll still be able to leave your house to go to the grocery store to get food. You'll still be able to visit a pharmacy, go to a medical office or hospital, or to gas up your car at a gas station. You'll still be able to go running and hiking and walk your dog. Many, many people will still go to work. For the vast majority of you already taking precautions, your lives will not change April 8th, and we'll continue to update you with new information. I'm just in awe. I really... To be honest, we don't have the resources, the capacity, or the desire I don't even know. to police it's every insane. individual's behavior. Enforcement comes...